I'm Justin Mott, real life photographer, Leica user, guy that wears weird hats, former reality TV show host for five years on a TV show on History Channel Asia that you've probably never heard of called Photo Face Off. I'm a wildlife photojournalist and editorial photographer, assignment photographer. I've shot over 100 assignments for the New York Times and I own and operate a commercial photography and video production company called Mott Visuals out of Vietnam working globally. My channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a professional working photographer. Today I'm going to talk about how I sell prints. I have no idea if it's going to work for you. I just know that I've tried a bunch of different ways to sell prints throughout my entire career very, very, very unsuccessfully. And recently I switched to a very simple minimalistic system and it has paid dividends and it is working and I'm going to quickly outline that system with you. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. I'm not making any promises. Let's go make some passive income together. So before we get into everything today guys, if you could take a moment as normal, if you could like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. It helps me, it helps my ego, it helps my like a habit. You could also go into the description section below and check out the stuff that I have for sale. I do sell prints, as you can see. I sell a preset that will not make you a better photographer, but it will add a little pop to your images. And I sell $99 one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour Zoom sessions directly through my website. So if you want to talk about photography, want to talk about your career, want me to go through your portfolio, or whatever you want to talk about, well, let's keep it to photography. You can book that directly through the link below. So first and foremost, throughout my entire career, I've dabbled in selling prints and I have had little to no success doing so up until about a year ago when Vietnam went into lockdown. I started looking at alternate ways to make income. I started looking at the back end of my business, looking for things that I can improve on. So I started looking at my print sales and I realized I really don't sell prints very successfully. So the old way I used to do it was, yeah, I would put a link like uh, these prints, these pictures are available for, for prints so you can buy prints and send a link and people could PayPal me. It wasn't really like built into my website well and, and it was really kind of hard to do. I didn't accept credit card, I'd do PayPal or people would buy it in cash and I would send it to them and I would either print it home and mail it to them. It just wasn't a good system from start to finish. So when I started to look into how to fix the system, the first thing I started to look at was what can I do on my website? And this is not sponsored content. I've used Squarespace for several years now. I use it for all my different websites and I had always noticed that you can do e-commerce through it. So I decided to look into setting up a print shop through my personal work, through my website, justinmott.com. And so that's what I did. I set up an online store within my existing website. It was super, super easy to use. On the back end, it was super easy to use and it was very well organized. And honestly, if I can do it, you can definitely do it because I'm not really good at that stuff. And there's different websites that work well for other people. I get that. Just I already had Squarespace as my website, so I just built it within my existing website. And within the first month of launching my online store, I sold more prints in one month than I had in my entire career. So now today I'm going to go through the big changes that I made and the system that has worked for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you. I hope it does, but this has worked for me. This has been the most successful I've ever been in selling my prints through my website. So the first thing you're going to have to decide is, are you going to sell your images? Are you going to sell your prints as additioned or as non additioned Some of you might already know this, but for those that don't, here's the difference. Addition means you set a finite number of the amount of prints that you can sell for a particular image. So for example, you might take one particular image from your archive or from a series and you say, I'm going to sell 10 of these images at three different sizes, so 30 total. So you might sell 10 at 8 by 12, 10 at 12 by 18, or, and 10 at 16 by 24, something like that. And once you're done selling those images, you can't sell them anymore. And the advantage of this is you sell them for more. Typically these images are more expensive because they are limited. And as you sell more, the value of the other ones goes up in price. And often you're appealing to people interested in collecting art. But again, once you're done, you're done. You can't just like all of a sudden change the size a little bit and sell a bunch more images, or you can't just all of a sudden like, okay, I'm going to redo this and sell it again. No, that's ethically wrong. And you're just going to get yourself in trouble doing that and build up a bad reputation. And yes, while addition prints can sell for a lot more money, you're talking thousands of dollars, or for some people, tens of thousands of dollars or, or even more. 
Uh, it's built on trust. You need to have the right clientele that has this kind of money and then you need the right clientele that's going to trust you. So what a lot of people do is they go through an art dealer or they go through a gallery for selling their individual print. And the gallery takes 50%, they handle all the printing, they handle all the contract, they handle all the certificates and they manage the print run and keep you updated on how many prints you sold and how many left and they communicate that to their clientele as well. So that's for some people. Some people are interested in going down that route. And now for many of you out there, and probably most of you out there, and probably the biggest market out there is, is the market for non-edition prints, meaning you can go nuts, go bananas, print like crazy, just non-stop printing. I wish I could do some sort of cool animation with prints running or something like that, but print as many as you want. Now these typically sell for a lot less because people aren't buying them as a collector's item. They're buying it for wall art, for their house, right? So it's not like a painting, a one of one. This is a one of infinity. So these typically sell for a lot less. And so for these non-edition prints, you're just looking to sell in bulk. That's how you're going to make your money. So after you've made the decision on editioned or non-editioned or both, you're going to have to decide on who is doing your printing. Are you going to do it yourself or are you going to outsource that? So for a lot of people, and again, everyone's different, but for a lot of people, if you're going to sell edition prints and you're going to sell them directly, meaning not through a gallery or not through a representative, then you might want to print yourself. You might want to invest in a expensive a printer and you might have a more hands-on approach. You might want to be shipping it yourself with your own certificate of authenticity and maybe a handwritten note in there and you might want to have custom packaging and all that kind of stuff. But if you're doing non-edition prints and you're dealing with bulk, it's probably going to be more cost efficient, not only for shipping, but also for printing to do it through a print store. For me, I prefer to outsource it. The way I do it, my two major markets are Europe and the US and I have one print shop that I use for those two markets, a company called White Wall. I'm happy with the price, I'm happy with the quality, and I'm happy with the experience that I have working with them. Putting the order in, I can do everything online. It's very, very easy. And for a lot less of my orders in smaller countries or in other countries outside of those two regions, I've built up a database of printers that I've been referred to by other photographers. They're usually great resources. And I keep a database of all those countries and all the print shops and my experience with them. And then every time I get a new order in, I just go there and I print through them. And that's what's worked for me. Now, as far as shipping goes and shipping costs, that's where it gets tricky. That's where a lot of people get intimidated. What I do to save costs is I print locally. So if I get an order in Japan, I use a printer in Japan. I get an order in the US, I use a printer in the US. Again, all in my database. And now all the shipping is different. All the prices are different. There's tons of different options. But what I do is I offer free shipping and that is built into my cost already. Now, yes, it's much cheaper when my orders come in for the European market and the American market specifically. And the smaller markets tend to be a little bit more expensive. And yes, I make less money off of those, but it averages out in my favor. For me, you're going to notice a common theme here today. I just like to keep it simple. I don't want a bunch of options on there that are going to scare people off. I can't have, I mean, you could, you could go in and customize this and do different options and have shipping calculators and all that. I just don't like to do that. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want my clients to have to deal with it. I like to keep it simple. So I offer a flat rate that's built into my cost already. Whatever works for you, you have to go through. You have to look at what it's going to cost to print, what it's going to cost to ship in the markets that you're likely to sell your images and build your cost around that. The next thing I do, or actually what I don't do, is I only ship prints. I don't deal with mounting. I don't deal with frames. I don't deal with any of that. Now, for some people it works well. For me, it doesn't. It's a whole different level of cost, a whole different level of customization, and just more things to worry about, something that I don't want to do. And again, to remind you guys, this is just a small part of my business. If you only did prints, you'd probably want to be a lot more diverse and have a lot more customizations than I do. The next decision you're going to have to make is sizes. And everyone's different about different sizes that they want to offer. For me, again, it's a common theme. I sound, very, I sound like a broken record, but keeping things simple. So I offer three different sizes at three different prices. I offer an 8x12 for $99. I offer a 12x18 for $150. And I offer a 16x24 for $225. On my website, I have inches and I have centimeters. So if you want to visit my website to see the way that I structure it, you can see it there at justinmott.com. And now for paper, you have to make a decision there. You have to make a decision whether you want to offer different types of paper, what brand of paper, all that kind of stuff. Since I'm selling my prints in bulk for a very affordable price, or what I think is an affordable price, I don't give my clients different options. I just print in luster paper, which is, for those of you out there that don't know, it's somewhere halfway between glossy and matte. Not too glossy, not fully matte, somewhere in between. 
That's what I offer. And I do full bleed prints. Some people like to have a border. I don't. It's all up to you in the end. You have to test. You have to see what works for you and you have to see what works for your potential clientele. So I've got three different sizes, one type of paper. And again, I chose Luster because it's easy to find everywhere. So once you've got your entire system in place, right? You've got your website or whoever you're using to host it and sell your images, your cost down, your pricing and your margin and your shipping and your printing and your sizes and your paper and all that kind of stuff. Once that's there, you're not just done. Don't just leave it on your website and expect it to take off. First of all, this industry is completely saturated. There are tons of photographers, amateur and pro that are selling their work online and selling it very cheap. So you've got to do a little bit of hustling. That doesn't mean you need to constantly bombard people with emails or ask people, buy a print, want to buy a print, want to buy a print. No, but you need to come up with some sort of marketing strategy. For me, what I do, I'm a little bit old school. I still have my newsletter. I send out two newsletters a month and not every single newsletter do I mention that I sell prints, but I put it in there somewhere. I also have a reminder in my calendar to let me know when holidays are coming up. So then I might do a full newsletter dedicated to selling prints. There are other creative ways you can do it too. You can take your Facebook banner and put like, make a nice little design there. I use Canva to design some things or however you like to design it. Make a little banner, show your best prints or just show one. Put a link in there where people can buy. Every once in a while, again, I'm not bombarding people constantly, or maybe my friends or people that watch this think I do, but I'm, I'm just putting it out there and reinforcing it. I'm just reminding people. On Instagram, sometimes I switch it up. In my profile, in my bio, I will put a link to my prints, you know, put the little sign, put the link to my prints up there, and then I will have Instagram stories and I'll create some sort of graphics, either animated or just some nicely designed templates, just reminding people that I sell prints. And every once in a while, you can have a sale as well. It's just finding that balance and seeing what works for you and how you market it, but don't just just let it sit there. They're not going to sell themselves on their own. And try not to get discouraged early on. Everyone's going to have different levels of success. Again, it took me a long time to sell prints. It took me a long time to figure this minimalistic system out. And this is the system that works for me. What I also like to tell people is to start small, start within your circle and then grow outwardly. The people more likely to buy your images in the beginning are people that know you personally. When people are putting an image up in their house, they want to tell a story behind it. So people like to tell a story like this image here when people buy that, if they know me. And you know, I like to tell them a story to share too. So this image was published in National Geographic. It was part of a personal project that I'm working on about Vietnam. So it's nice. Like people want to have that. They like having that connection with you. You can tell them the story about the image. They have the print up in their house. They have a little story to tell people that are visiting. Another piece of advice is to make sure you manage your gallery on your website properly. Look at what images are selling, which images aren't. Put the images that are selling up front, up towards the top of the gallery. The images that aren't selling, rotate them out. That's the nice thing again about Squarespace is I have all those details there. I can see like image number 17 is not selling. Image number four is selling a ton. So I know where to rank those. I know where to put them in my gallery. And then every once in a while, mix it up, try different collections. And the other thing is think about which images you put into your gallery. For some photographers, you shoot a diverse body of work. Think about which images people would want to put on their wall. For some of my hardcore documentary, a lot of my sad stuff, it's probably a little bit less likely that people are going to buy it. But some of the happier stuff, some of the more landscape stuff, that stuff sells better. It doesn't mean you need to change who you are as a photographer. That's not what I mean at all. I mean, if you shoot just hardcore black and white street photography, fine, put that out there, but curate the kind of work that you think people might want to hang up on the wall. That's it. Put some thought into that. And also don't clutter your gallery with too many images. Don't put too many things out there for people to choose from. You know, I put about 50 images on my website. I wouldn't put like 500 or a thousand and then also make sure you're a good editor. Don't put too much redundancy out there. You've got one shot of the person looking this way and then the same picture and they're just slightly looking that way. Like, don't do that. Figure it out. Put the best picture up there. Be a good editor. Spend some time editing your work for your gallery. So just to reiterate some of the things I talked about today, the first thing is getting a proper website where you can do e-commerce so people can buy directly from your site. I really like Squarespace because it was super, super easy for me to set up. It looks clean. It looks professional. It looks secure and on the back end, it's really, really organized. I've got automated templates. So when people put an order in, they receive confirmation of that order. I have a whole list there. I can see exactly what's selling, which orders have been fulfilled, which orders haven't. I can see exactly where they're coming from. I can see exactly where I'm shipping to. So I know which markets are working well for me and which markets aren't. Everything is there. All the data is there for you to analyze and make adjustments. For me, what's worked is keeping it simple. I offer three different sizes at three different price points, free shipping worldwide. I don't deal with any mounting or frames and one type of paper. Of course, if people sent me a private email and they wanted me to customize things, I would, but I like to keep the choices simple. I have found that when I make the decisions for people and I keep things simple and I keep the options simple that I sell more. Again, this is just a small part of my business. So this allows me to do it this way. If I was only selling 
selling prints, I'd have to have a lot more customization options out there. I'd have to do things probably a lot differently, but this is what's working for me right now, so I'm gonna stay with it. Let me know what works for you or what hasn't worked for you, and if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments section. I'd be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you for tuning in today, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everyone.